Each and every day, we get up in the morning and we make decisions. With our coffee, the clothes, the little bear, how to get to work, whether we should buy a car or a house this year or next year, or whether even to get married. Young folk only got one in here. <laughs> whether get married this year or next year. And some decisions we make are not as good ones. Some are bad, and some that we even regret. I have a few of them. But there are some people start out today just seeing how they can steal from you, hurt you, and they just sit and think of different ways to do it. And then some even go a little too farther. They want to hurt you and kill you. Some of them end up in jail and some of them end up in prison. And what's the first thing a police officer has to do by law when he arrests you? It's called Miranda rights. Miranda rights. A few people don't know this. Realize that Miranda, Miranda warning originated from the Supreme Court ruling in 1966. Ernesto Miranda had been in, in and out of Arizona State Juvenile Courts for more than a decade. He had a long record that included convictions of armed robbery, armed robbery, assault, burglary, and attempted rape. And the police had believed that he was a sexual predator. He was arrested on March 13th of 1963 and was charged with stealing $8 from a Phoenix resident. But the police were actually interested in him in regarding a rape that had occurred in which he was considered the prime suspect. They questioned him for two hours and bluffed Miranda, suggesting that a woman who he had been assaulted 11 days earlier had picked him out of a lineup. He signed a written confession and receives a sentence of 20 to 30 years for kidnapping and rape of an 18-year-old mentally retarded woman. His lawyers attempt to get, him, get the conviction overturned, arguing that Miranda had never received, never been informed of his constitutional rights. The case went all the way to the Supreme Court, and the four out of five decisions in the court agreed the conviction was overturned on June 13, 1966. Miranda was evidently tried a second time, convicted of a crime, went to prison, and served almost 10 years of his total prison sentence. He was paroled December of, 2000, of 1972. On January 31st of 1976, Miranda got into a fight in a tavern in Phoenix over a $3 bet. When he went to the bathroom, to get the blood off his hands, he was stabbed to death. The police arrested the, steps, the suspect, and he chose to read the Miranda rights to him. <laughs> and was released. Ernesto Miranda was 34 years old when he died. Some say, some say that he got what he deserved. Kind of a little different history there. There's a true story in the Bible when Jesus was crucified on the cross, about two men. They had never been served of Miranda rights. They didn't have an attorney to get them off on a technicality. In those days when you were guilty of a thief or murder or burglary, you were just put to death. So if you would, I'd like for you to turn to the Bible, Luke 23, verse 32. And there was also two other malefactors led with him to be put to death. And when they were come to a place which was called Calvary, they crucified him and the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. And Jesus said, and said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know what not they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots, and the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them derailed them, saying, He saved others, let him save himself. If he be Christ, the chosen of the God, and the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offered him vinegar, and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, 
save thyself. And a superscription also was written over him in the letters of the Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. And one of the male factors which were hang, hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Does not thou fear God, seeking thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward for our deeds. But this man had done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember we when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. I want you to look at verse, verse 34. Father, forgive them. Remarkable words right there. Remarkable words. He was fastened to the cross, or has, or has they, as they was driving nails into him, he was praying this prayer. That's why he went to the cross and was purchased, and purchased forgiveness for our sins. The crucifiers of Christ were kept in ignorance of what they were doing, if they would not know, if they had only known the truth. The rulers had installed into them. What they did against Christ and his doctrine, they had thought they were doing a godly service. That's why Christ was praying for them, and we pray for our forgiveness and others. In the second half of the verse, and they parted the raiment and cast lots, which means the soldiers were 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 employed in the execution, execution seized his garments as fee. Or maybe the robe of Christ wasn't torn or wasn't mourned, so they drew straws for the garment. Verse 35, we'll move on down to 35. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also with them, and derailed him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he be Christ, the chosen God. They mocked him, and if he would have saved his, saved his life, which he certainly could have, he could not have saved others. They challenged him to save himself from the cross when he was saving others by the cross. In fact, the cross had been planned before the foundation of the world. In 1 Peter 1, 18 through 20, for as so much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation receiving by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ of the Lamb, which without blemish and without spot, who verily foreordained before the foundations of the before the foundation of the world but was manifested in these last times for you. It was all part of God's plan. we we'll move on down to verse 38. And the super, super inscription, I lost it. And the super inscription also was written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. It was inscribed in Greek, Latin, and Hebrew, it was written in three languages that it would be read by all men. These were the three main languages then, and these three in these three languages, Jesus Christ was proclaimed clean. He was proclaimed clean. Hard to say that. In three languages. He was put to death for pretending he was king of the Jews, but God intended him to be what he really was. Christ is the king of the Jews and the creator of the heavens and on earth and the only way was through the cross. I want to read verse 39 through 41. And one of the malefactors which hanged railed on him saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him saying, Dost not thou fear God? 
seeing thou art in the same condemnation. And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward for our deeds. But this man had done nothing Amos. These two men were going through the same treatment as Christ was going through. But one of the men hung in, hung in there till the last. This guy was in agony and in pain, just like Christ. And he was still saying the same thing everybody else was. He was challenging him. But the other man answered him first. Does thou not fear God? He made a moment of divine mercy and grace. He implies that it was, the, it was the fear of God that stopped him from doing what everyone else was doing, was doing evil towards Christ. We see in verse 41 that he admits what he, was do, what he had done was wrong. And he believes God had done the right by punishing them for wicked things that they had done. And also believes that Christ to, to have suffered wrongfully. In verse 42, And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. He first recognized who, who Jesus really is. He called him Lord. Then he presents a simple prayer of repentance. Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. He was asking for eternal life. Verse 43, And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today, Shall thou, shall thou be with me in paradise? Christ showed favor in him. That is why he came to earth, was to save. As Christ was on, his, on the cross, in his greatest struggle, agony and pain, he still had a word of comfort for this man. He still had a word of comfort. If you'll be true repentant of your sins and believe believe in him through Christ you obtain not only a pardon of your sins but a place in paradise with him as Christ died to purchase the forgiveness of sins for us he also purchased eternal life for us Jesus Christ died to open the kingdom of heaven for all believers now this scripture is a good example of a few things It's never too late to repent, no matter what you've done. Like it says in Matthew, we should love our enemies. We should pray for them and those that hate and persecute us. I'm going to ask you as the believers here tonight, Do you think this man that had done wrong and was forgiven, do you think he was thankful? That God gave him a gift of eternal life? Do you think he was thankful? When was the last time you really thanked for God for what he'd done in your life? I mean, really thanked him. Sure. We come to church and we pray our daily prayers and we come to church and we say, Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for the many blessings. Amen. But when was the last time you really thanked him? Thanked him for putting you at this point in time right now. Could have put you in the 1700s. And you were fighting for freedom from Great Britain. Could have put you in the 1800s. You're fighting the Civil War. Thousands of people lost their lives every day. Or he could have put you in another country. And you didn't know where you were going to sleep at night. Or didn't know where your next meal was coming from. 
but instead he puts you right here and right now. Y'all know Robert, right? I know everybody knows Robert. He's kind of like a little shadow. And I will give you this for all you grandpas out there. All you grandpas out there. I'm the number one grandpa. I'm the best grandpa ever. So you guys got to do a lot of work <laughs> keeping up with it. That's what he told me the other day. <laughs> he'll call up and he'll ask to come over and spend the night. Marlene will say, I don't know. <laughs> but his return is 99% of the times. But Mimi, I gotta spend time with Grandpa. <laughs> and what do you say in return? I'm a chocolate. <laughs> 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 Marlene says, uh, you do too much for him. Give him ice cream. Buying things you don't need. And every time he calls and wants to go fishing, you just jump right up and go. <laughs> what you don't know, if the other grandkids were around, instead of living in Seattle, she probably wouldn't see me at all. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing that she knows, but she don't know right here, I almost missed it all. I received a gift from God. And I get to spend more time with my wife, who I love dearly. My mother. My kids. My grandkids. I make every moment count. It will be nine years this coming May. And I still... Every day say my prayers. And I still tear up every time I th tell him, thanks for giving me a second chance in life. One of these men received a gift from Christ that day. A gift of eternal life. And I know he's thankful. When was the last time you actually thanked him for putting you here and letting him, letting him come into your heart and thanking him for receiving the most treasured gift you'll ever receive? Eternal life. When was the last time? And that's my message. <laughs>